Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at all the book purchases that I've made. And there's quite a bit. Let's jump into it. Right guys, so these will be all the books that I've kind of counted towards my acquisitions for the beginning of the year. Um, a lot of them I got a book token for Christmas um some of them are christmas presents all that kind of jazz and some of them i just trade myself too because why not we're in another lockdown and i don't have very much to do so yeah <laughs> the first book i have is the muse by jesse burton this was a part of my secret santa's book swap i did and yeah this is what they sent me i kind of just asked them to send me their favorite book um i told them what i liked but i i just asked for their favorite and this is what they sent me. First, can we talk about how beautiful this cover is? It's gorgeous, I love it. Um, but also, I have no clue what it's about. Shall we, shall we find out together? On a hot July day in 1967, Odell Bastian climbs the stone steps of the skeleton gallery in London, ready for her luck to change. She has been employed as a typist by the glamorous and enigmatic, ig, enigmatic, that, that's a hard word for me this morning. Um, Marjorie Quick, who unlocks potential Odell didn't realise she had. That was a sleepy sound. When the last masterpiece arrives at the gallery, Quick seems to know more than she is prepared to reveal, and Odell is determined to unravel the truth. The painting's secret history lies in 1936, a larger house in rural Spain, where Olive Schloss, the daughter of a renowned art dealer, is harbouring ambitions of her own. Into this fragile paradise come two strangers who overturn the Schloss family with explosive and des devastating consequences this is hard to say <laughs> um but yeah it sounds like we follow two timelines we've got a bit of mystery we've got a bit of love we've got a bit of spice i don't know <laughs> but it sounds good i i'm interested in reading this hopefully it's got a touch of magic touch of fantasy who knows but but can we just talk about the book is beautiful i found this cute little second hand shop and we were the only ones in there and it was great of course before lockdown and tears and the world went to chaos but um yeah i found these two books by alison weir both are about the tudors because she is a tudor historian and she is the best of the best um and i couldn't pass uh picking these up so i got henry the eighth king and court this explores um the tudor court and his society uh politics that kind of thing um within the time Henry VIII because this is considered the greatest court in England even today it's still like super renowned. The next book I picked up by her is um, Mary Queen of Scots and the Murder of Lord Darnley. Um, Lord Darnley was not a great guy and it is highly suspected that Mary had some involvement in his death and that was kind of her downfall that's when things started taking a bad turn for her and I'm very intrigued in Mary Queen of Scots as well as the whole like two to time period. There are some great BBC documentaries. Highly, highly recommend. Um, but yeah, so chuffed that I found this and just can't wait to get into it. Um, next, I picked up just some continuations to series that I wanted to read this year. And um, I picked up The Mime Order and This Song Rising. I've also got The Mask Falling on um, pre-order. I really need to reread The Bone Season, but I remember adoring it and I can't wait to jump back into this world. Um, I am gonna have to reread and just do a major binge, but I can't wait. So that will happen as soon as I get the mass falling, I think. Um, in this, we follow an alternate universe of London and England, and there are people called clairvoyants and they're outlawed. If you get caught, then bad things happen. And we follow Paige, who is a clairvoyant and who does get caught. And that's all I'm saying because I only remember chunks of it and I can't tell you what's a spoiler and what's not. But yeah, I'm very, very excited to have these and I can't wait to get the fourth book in the mail. I am obsessed with Samantha Shannon's writing. I really loved Priory of the Orange Tree, so I can't wait to read these. Continuing on the series train, um, I discovered N.K. Jemisin last year. I read the fifth season and The Obelisk Gate and I was so obsessed and I kept putting off this because I'm so attached to this world to the characters in this world that I don't I don't want it to end and I feel like this book is going to wreck me the first two did um it just 
has no regard for my heart and how I feel about some of these characters. It's so good and I highly recommend. She is definitely one of my top favourite authors of all time. She's just so good. And the fifth season, we are in this world where there are seasons and basically that's when the world ends but people are able to survive it. There are also um, people who have special abilities called or orange genes. Orange genes? I think I'm saying that wrong. But they have the ability to control the earth and earthquakes and the earth's surface and tectonic plates and things. But they're considered dangerous and to be feared and controlled instead of the opposite is how I, I mean I think you would treat these people really well but they're not and so we follow three stories and it's just so good I, I can't sing her praises enough and you, you'll see what I've done here in a minute but um the next series I want to continue is The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakaborty I really 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 enjoyed The City of Brass I think I gave it a lower rating than I should have had it should have definitely been a five star read because I still think about it and I only gave it <sighs> four stars. Um, I do need to reread it because at that time we had some things happen in our life and I think it skewed how I was feeling about just things in general. Um, so there are books that I read during that time for very, I'm going to give a second chance. The City of Brass being one of them um, and then I'm going to continue on with this. I would have bought the third book but it's not out in paperback yet. But I can't wait. In this we follow, in the first book we follow a con artist called Nahiri and she discovers that there are things that are magical and gets whisked away. It's very good. Really, really liked it. I've also decided to um, read more of Murakami. Last year I read 1Q84 as well as The Colorist Tezuka Uzaki. I enjoyed both of those. The Colorist Tezuka Tezukuru Tazaki is another one I think I would rate higher. I gave it four. I can't stop thinking about it. It probably means it's a five star read for me. Um, so yeah, I like his writing. It's a bit of weird. It's a bit of fun. I enjoy them. Um, and so I picked up Kafka on the Shore because everyone talks about this. And all I know, it's about a man who tracks lost cats and a boy named Kafka who runs away. And somehow their stories moot his stories are magical and weird and just good good um and then i picked up this one on a whim because it sounded really interesting and it's after dark it's about um this girl who lies whose sister lies in a dark sleep and weird things that happen at night and it just says strange nocturnal happenings or the trick of the night eyes mark the shape of the city so it's a short book. I'm hoping it's weird and wacky and magical and just good. Um, that's all I can say about Murakami is that his books just hold something. Just, just do something to me that I enjoy. Although he does talk about boobs and nipples a lot. Two that I picked up are thrillers. One of them I would call a gothic horror, which I have adored, and that is Laura Purcell's Bone China and I adored Silent Companions. It creeped me out. It gave me the spooks. I had to put it down because I was home alone reading it. But Chef's Kiss, so good. It's one of my favourite books of all time. And this we follow um, a man and his daughter after their family has been like ravaged completely with consumption and left them just grief stricken. And something happens. They move to the coast and 40 years later a nurse comes and works. For Miss, per uh, Miss Pinecroft, who is now partially paralysed and mute because of something that's happened, and scary things start to happen. And yeah, that's all I want to know. It sounds good. If it's anywhere close to Silent Companions, I will be so happy. And then I picked up this The Chestnut Man. This has been on my radar for a long time, and again, I just put it off and I was like, no, no more. Pick it up, pick it up, uh, because I think I'm going to love it. And that's because I read this book and I enjoyed it so much. It's kind of a Scandi detective Nordic vibe. I'm into it. I like those kind of like mystery detective novels. They're my new favourite thing. Um, <laughs> new kind of favourite thing. Um, and in this we follow a neighbourhood in Copenhagen where a woman is found brutally murdered 
and like her hand is missing and he leaves a calling card which is a chestnut doll made a chestnut doll a doll made out of chestnuts um and it's like a detective thriller and i'm excited i want to be creeped out does this require any explanation i just want to read it all of nk jemison that's my life goal um i bought this because i was trying to buy the book separately and i couldn't find the last book um, so this is a bind up of the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, the Breaking Kingdoms, the Kingdom of God and the Awakened Kingdom. So yeah, I'm excited and it's about a girl who finds out she's related to gods and gets thrown in this like competition to rule. That's all I know and that's all I want to know and I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, I could not find the Kingdom of Gods anywhere. Um, and you can't find this most places if you go on eBay and look at Blackwell's Oxford and not just Blackwell's online you can find it and it came from Oxford Blackwell's store pro tip I'm excited it's huge and it's floppy and it gives me such joy and then for Christmas my mum got me Catwoman but I'm not sure where I placed that by Sarah J Mass. I'm excited to read this I actually really like Sarah J Mass's writing and in this we follow the story of how Catwoman became Catwoman. Intrigued. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about it, but looking forward to it. And she also, I guess my parents, they both got me this, but um, they also got me The Late Comers by Helen Klein Ross. I'm not quite sure what this is about. I know it's a historical fiction um, set in 1908. Um, it says, a deeply moving family drama about a young Irish immigrant, an ancestral home in New England, and a dark secret that lay hidden in its walls for generations. So yeah excited there we go i feel like i've rambled for forever um i did some damage i also bought some kindle books but you will see a video about what's on my kindle and we will talk about that there um anyway enough of me i hope you're having a good week i hope you're staying happy safe and healthy and i will see you soon in another video bye guys <laughs>